Alrighty guys, well, welcome to the video. So today is going to be a really big video because what I'm going to be showing you guys how to do is how to actually fully lock your um, Ryzen 7000 X3D chip to actually fully be at a stable all core turbo ratio. Now, why is this such a big deal? Well, AMD has put so many different locks on this chip that it has become uh, notorious as being something that a lot of people have used to kind of discredit the ability of to say that the X3D chips are actually good uh, CPUs. And this is sort of a problem because um, when the when the frequency is fluctuating aggressively, this can cause a lot of issues with performance because if it can't stay at a stable frequency, if a new task or a new something comes up, then it's going to have difficulty with ramping up those clocks in time. And so you get a latency hit and you lose performance. So that's what we're going to be tackling is fixing all of this fluctuation. And we're going to have these core effective clocks matching this regular clock at all times. So how do we do that? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to disable the idle states. So that's step one, is disabling the idle states. This is different than C states. C states are like core parking, which disables the cores. C states are much different than idles. Idle states are like P states, or essentially they're like C states for your frequency. So there's sort of a difference there. So how do we disable that? Well, if we go into command prompt and then we run these two specific commands, and then we press enter, what that's going to do is it's going to force the CPU to run at 100%, which fixes the first problem, which is the actual effective clock. If you're using this on the 5800X 3D or any other X 3D chip, this alone will lock the actual minimum clock speed that the actual CPU will run at is at 4.2, because the actual base clock of uh, X3D chips, uh, especially the newer ones, is 4.2. So it's going to lock that CPU frequency for you. That's the first major step, is because if we can get the CPU to be within 500-ish megahertz, maybe 1,000, then we're kind of already close, uh, close, we're almost three quarters of the way there. So that's the first thing. Now, with power saving features, that is going to be your C states, and then that is going to be anything else that is essentially available on your system. So you're going to have to do some digging around. There are a couple of them, but there's not too many of them. The C states is the biggest one, and then a couple of other ones like idle, idle features as well. So disable the power saving states. Now, we need to disable the boost algorithm states. How do we do that? Well, in your BIOS and in your registry, actually, there are going to be two specific services that are running. And what these services do is they essentially allow your CPU to actually turbo. And this is the main services we're going to disable. Now, why are we disabling the turbo? Because part of the problem is that if the precision boost overdrive algorithm, or essentially the CPU algorithm that is locked down by AMD, is essentially forcing it to run at a higher frequency, then if we try and change the BCLK clock, that's going to cause issues. So first thing we're going to do is we're gonna go into here and take the AD AMD PPM service and set that to disabled. That's gonna be the first step. Now, we're going to look for another service and what that's going to be called is the processor service. We're going to want to disable that one as well. This is essentially very similar to the actual um, one we just barely were looking at, which is the AMD PPM one. Once you disable those two, that's going to prevent the CPU from turboing past 4.2 or essentially your base clock. So we've essentially closed the distance between our, our maximum boost and our minimum boost. And we're starting to get more and more stable clock frequency here. Now, the final step, the last boosting algorithm that we have to disable is core performance boost. When we disable core performance boost, that is what's going to make our CPU run at a stable 4.2 or base clock frequency no matter what. If we run all three of those specific services, technically four, if we run all four of those, that is going to be all that we need to do to get our CPU at base clock speed. Now, the next step is that we have to worry about the voltages and the frequency. So not all motherboards have this specific feature. So if you can't do this part, then don't worry about it because there are going to be other things you can do to still get your frequency to boost significantly higher. In fact, we'll go with that step first, which is the actual PBO offset. So 
if you have what is known as a asynchronous clock, and I'll show you a picture of what it looks like in your BIOS, you'll have this specific feature, which is known as async CPU or essentially ECLK clock. And this essentially allows you to decouple the CPU base frequency from the PCIe frequency and the SATA frequency and the NVMe frequency, all that stuff. It basically decouples it and it lets you actually change the base clock algorithm in the way that you want to. So that's going to be the main thing is we have to enable that. Now, if we go into the PBO, we're going to want to do one of two things. If you don't have the asynchronous CPU enabled or you don't have that feature, what we're going to want to do is do a negative curve offset. So you're going to want to go and do as many um, negative increments as you can. The best is around negative 20 to negative 30. Any higher than that, and it's going to be very difficult to actually stabilize. So that's the first thing is make sure that you do negative and about negative 30 will let you basically have a CPU that will boost to 5.2 um, almost the entire time, and it will stay at 4.2 at a minimum if it ever has to throttle down. So that's the main thing. Now, the last step, which is going to allow us to actually have the full-on effect right here, which is the actual effective clock being as high as the regular clock is and still at the turbo frequency of 5.2, what we're going to do is we're going to raise the BCLK of the asynchronous CPU clock. And what that's going to look like is inside of my BIOS, it's just this CPU clock control. And we're going to want to do it in about three to five increments. So 103 to 105. And we're going to go into the PBO and then we're going to do a positive curve offset because this is going to give us a higher base voltage. A higher base voltage means a higher base frequency because it means that we actually have the actual voltage headroom to raise the base frequency. So now that we have that feature, we're going to keep incrementally stepping up the frequency of the CPU until we find a cap. Now, what I found is that my CPU is able to get up to about 4.9 gigahertz to 5 gigahertz all core, and it will stop right about there. So if I try to go much further past 4.9 gigahertz, I'd say, I will start getting black screens and it's basically um, impossible to stabilize. So I have to essentially uh, stop right there. That's basically the farthest that I can go. At a positive 60 offset, that's the most I can go and do. And that's where most people are going to be stopped at is when they actually have, um, have the asynchronous clock, but they don't have the next final step, which is the actual voltage for the core of the CPU. Now, what that is, is if we go into our BIOS and we're going to look for it right here, it's the CPU V core. Now, normally this is actually restricted. This is actually something that you can't access in the BIOS, but a certain motherboards, um, mine's Gigabyte, for example, will have BIOSes that still support the CPU even though they came out before the actual CPU was released. Don't ask me how that's possible, but it just is. And so if you upgrade your BIOS to the latest BIOS versions, you will actually not be able to access the CPU vCore modification, but on the earlier BIOSes, you can. Now, what we're going to do is, if this is something that I recommend you guys pay very close attention to, so this is going to be a very small category of people, but if you're going to do it, then be very, very careful because these chips are super sensitive, way more sensitive than any other chip you'll ever see. And so what we're going to do is use a CPU vCore offset mode override, and we're going to raise it by 0 0.025 millivolts. And we don't want to go over 1.1 to 1.15 volts. These CPUs cap out at 1.2 volts. That is the maximum frequency that the CPU will run at. So make sure that when you're typing this in that you're actually getting this correctly because if you do this wrong, your CPU will die and there will not be anything to stop it. So this is something that can be extremely dangerous if you do it incorrectly. So just know that this is not something for the faint of heart or people that don't want to lose their system or you know are worried about this. So once we raise that by a few different increments, we'll be able to essentially find the maximum frequency that our CPU can support at a given voltage for a base frequency. Now, without the voltage core offset mode, the most I can get is about 0.975 uh, millivolts on, or actually volts, so 0.95 uh, volts essentially. And that's going to be the maximum that I can get out of this CPU. 
but because I'm able to apply an offset, I'm able to raise it to about 1.07. And that is what allows me to get my base clock past the 4.9 gigahertz threshold and go way past it into the 5.2. Now, if I wanted to, and I wanted to go up to like 1.15, this, this chip could probably easily do 5.4 on all cores, which is insane because that's, an, uh, that's a really, really good um, thing to see, which is a locked frequency CPU running at an all core turbo. Now, just so anybody is wondering, no, this isn't the algorithm just capping the actual CPU and, you know, as soon as we run into a load issue, then it's going to suddenly throttle itself down by hundreds, if not thousands of megahertz. No, we're going to run a simple stress test. This is just essentially a simple OCCT stress test, and we're going to watch these clocks. It'll go down a little bit. That's normal. There will be a, like about 50 to 100 megahertz, but that's actually what's usually supposed to happen anyway. And that's what all chips will do to begin with, because the effective clock is a measurement of the actual regular clocks in respect to, you know, idle states and other stuff like that. And so if we go and run this, what we're going to see is that this will drop by just a little bit, but it will stay consistent. So here we go. So there you guys go. Your CPU will stay at that consistent voltage. And if you have a really good cooler, your CPU will stay at um, essentially this voltage ev with even extremely cold. So am I also, I'm pretty comfortable with setting my voltage this high because my CPU under a stress test is not getting above 40 degrees Celsius. So that's another thing too that I would find to be comforting is that my CPU is like nearly impossible to thermal throttle especially if like I, I, the only way I could do it is if I threw like Lin pack or something at it, but there's no, there's no game out there that runs harder than, you know, Lin pack or runs even close to that. So yeah, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully that you guys um, let me know how it goes for you. If you have the asynchronous clock and let me know if you guys are able to achieve these kind of results. Anyway, guys, have a good one. My name's Savitarix and I'm out.